my big brick. Today I'm going to be making cheese straws. My hair is tied back, my sleeves are rolled up. The only thing I have left to do before I can get started is really carefully wash my hands. You will need some puff pastry or short crust pastry if you prefer, but I prefer puff. It looks like this or it looks like this, doesn't really matter. Uh, sometimes it comes in a block like that and that's fine too, you'll just need to roll it out. You will need some cheese, doesn't really matter what kind of cheese, whatever you've got in the fridge. And you'll need a tiny bit of plain flour. Optionally, I'm going to use, but you definitely don't need to use in order to make delicious two straws. One egg, uh, and I happen to have a little bit of pesto, and a few sesame seeds. And they're really yummy with this as well, but again, you really don't need to if you don't have them. I've also lined two baking trays with greaseproof paper and turned my oven, oven on to about 200 or 220 degrees Celsius. First of all, it's really important to get your pastry out of the fridge before you start using it because when it's in the fridge it's all hard and crackly and when you get, like, get it out of the fridge and let it warm up then it's nice and easy to use. Then you'll need to grate some cheese. Two or three handfuls of cheese is probably good. If you're a child with child sized hands, you might want more handfuls of cheese. Doesn't really matter if you do too much cheese because you can use the leftovers in a sandwich. So I braided my cheese, I've got a mixture of cheddar and also a little bit of leftover mozzarella from making pizzas. So I've got a nice couple of handfuls of uh, mixed up grated cheese. I'm just finishing unrolling my pastry so now I've got a nice flat roll of pastry and if you're using the block of pastry then you just need to roll it out so that you get to about this point. Um, and this is optional, I've got some pesto and I really like it so I'm going to add um, a little bit of pesto onto my pastry. Not very much, just a tiny bit so you get a nice fadly flavour. But if you don't like pesto or you don't have pesto, then um, don't do it. Okay, I've got my pesto on. Now I'm going to put my cheese on. Uh, the best thing to do is just put cheese on half because in a minute we're going to be rolling it in half. Okay, I've got my cheese on. It's quite thick, but that's okay because we're going to be rolling it out and making it thinner in a minute. So now what we're going to do is carefully take one end of the pastry and fold it in half and squish it down a little bit with your hands. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my surface and move my pastry onto there, taking care not to get the cheese out. If you were uh, slightly cleverer than me, you might have done this part, taken it off the paper before you put the cheese in, but that's okay, I've learned from my mistakes. Next I'm going to start rolling it out so that it gets a bit thinner, this is too thick for now. So you need to roll it until it's about the thickness of a pound coin or so big that it doesn't fit under the camera anymore. If you are able to make it so that the sides are completely straight then you're a more magical person than me but that is what we're aiming for. This is optional step number two. If you want your pastry to be shiny then you can beat up an egg and brush that over the top at this point. You absolutely don't need to, but uh, I'm going to do that because I have got some sesame seeds. Again, don't need them, but I like them and I have them in my cupboard already. And I'm going to put sesame, on, sesame seeds on top and the egg will help them stick. If you don't have a pastry brush, like my lovely new pastry brush here, you can do what I did last time I made these and use your hands. It's really messy. 
Now it's covered in a little bit of egg. I'm going to sprinkle my sesame seeds very carefully because these are very messy. Now you just need to cut them up. You need to find the least sharp knife that you can and cut very gently so that you don't mark your um, countertop and just cut your cheese straws out. Mine are all going to be this long so I've cut that in half and then I'm going to cut lengths like this. When your cheese straws are cut, then you're going to pick them up very carefully, twist them a bit between your fingers, and oh, that's not very good. And put it on your lined baking sheet, which you can't see at the moment, but I'll show you in a minute when they are done. I might have done these too thick. I might need to make them thinner. I made them too thick. Imagine that I made them this thin the first time. Here are my cheese twists all twisted up. I actually needed three trays because I cut them a bit too big and then a bit too small. But that is how we learn things. I'm going to pop these in the oven um, for maybe 15 or 20 minutes. While they're in the oven, I'm going to start my washing up. So let's do it at the end. My cheese straws are in the oven for about 20 minutes and now they're finished. Some of the cheese leaked out slightly from the sides, um, but that's why we've got paper down, so that's okay. I can't wait to eat one of these when they're cool enough. 